good evening, good morning, ladies and germs. You're listening to It Came From The Radio, and I'm here with Juan Punchy Gonzalez. He's an overall muso. He does a bunch of things. Could you just tell our audience who I am speaking with in a minute? Who are you? Uh, well, uh, everybody calls me Punchy as a nickname. I'm Juan Gonzalez. Uh, uh, for 20-plus years, I toured the world with various pop and heavy metal bands as a sound engineer and tour manager. I also produced a bunch of records uh, for various heavy metal bands and uh, did some music videos that were on MTV as a director. And I've uh, done documentaries uh, and all that stuff uh, as a director and an editor. And then I also make my own music. Uh, I have a couple running projects. One of them is uh, uh, Apex Zenith, which is kind of like the 80 synth pop kind of thing. And uh, the one that I'm I'm currently out there, you know, plug in is the new Cosmic Punch record, which is called For All Nerd Kind. And uh, it's a it's a nerd rock project. I only mm -hmm. sing about nerdy sci fi stuff and okay. and it's all about nerd stuff and nerdy nerds rule. And that's it. One video is in 3D. Just a little side note, quick question. Now, if uh, if an artist does heavy metal, but he loses a substantial amount of weight, would it be lat metal? Well, that's a very good question because uh, remember that aluminum itself is a pretty lightweight metal and aluminum is pretty much what we use to make airplanes out of. So, I mean, you know, a lightweight metal can have as much strength as a, a heavyweight metal. Wow. wow. Mercury and is a heavyweight metal, but it's a, it's a liquid, right? And one, one more outlier question before we go into my questions. What was one of your favorite music videos to produce? My favorite music videos to produce? Yeah. Gosh. Well, <laughs> three. my own, of course, you know, but, but, uh, uh, gosh, I, I, you know, primarily I looked at making most of my music videos as, as a, a, uh, or the videos that I made for other people, excuse me, mm -hmm. um, as, as, as a means of work, it's like anything else, you know, if it, uh, you know, if you're going to, it is a music business. So if you're going to, if, if someone's going to be making money, you want to be making it. It's like right. anything else, you know, like you know, if somebody else is making money, OK, I, I guess good for them. You know, you don't want to be jealous either. Um, but uh, at the same time, if it's if it's coming your way, take it. And even if it's something you're not necessarily on board with 100 percent, at least try to give yourself 100 percent to put into whatever you can, given, of course, the budget that you're given. You know, right, right, right. Definitely. Well said, which actually goes right into my first official question. How can one make money as a music producer in 2024 as the times have certainly changed since the 90s? Very good question. Uh, the the short and the long answer is I have no idea. Uh, but I can tell you that that there are look, it's like anything else. Right place, right time, right band, right artist, right mix, right songs. All those things have to kind of line up and people have to like it, too. Right. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. so so you can have like the most awesomest music, quote unquote, uh, you know, because I, I personally think that my stuff rules and everybody else's stuff sucks. But now it's a question of getting everybody else to think that, too, you know, and a lot of it, of course, includes money. Money is a big factor in, in a lot of this. Um, money buys you advertising. Money mm -hmm. buys you awareness. Money buys you all kinds of neat stuff. Uh, I remember I was working with a pop artist. I'm not going to I'm not going to say the name of the pop artist, but uh, that person had a publicist. And this job of this publicist was to do nothing more than to make sure that certain famous people were at those shows mm -hmm. and that this famous person was invited to these famous events where people were going to be taking lots of pictures, et cetera. And that kind of influence is not cheap. Because those people have those those publicists have Rolo Dexes and these well back in the day Rolo Dexes we'll just keep using I remember the, we'll just keep using the word Rolo Dex even though nobody uses a physical Rolo Dex anymore but those people have a list of phone numbers and people that they can say hey listen I'm going to trade you a favor I need you to invite so and so to this party because I know that so and so is going to be there and they want to get pictures taken with this person so that this person can do this and da 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 so mm -hmm. I without I'm not trying to commit vocabularial algebra by just saying X, Y, Z equals, you know, whatever. But, but at the same time, the, the amount of influence that can be bought is staggering. Mm -hmm. We wouldn't have most of the pop artists that we have nowadays if it, if it wasn't for good publicists. So, 
And because in a perfect example of that is there's a lot of crap music movie television product out there that's just famous for the sake of being famous, even though it is for the most part talent free. Right. Oh, definitely. You know, a lot of people I, I, in my younger years, before I was a doctor, I, I did stand up comedy. And a lot of people said, all these comedians, especially the ones who stay local and didn't really go from state to state, they'd say, oh, well, you know, they're so talented, they're going to go far. But there's so many talented musicians, comedians, public speakers, uh, doctors, and they don't get their their attention. It, it's really not necessarily about the talent. Would you agree on that or disagree? Uh, no, no. I mean, it's well, we 50 percent agree because because um, you can you can cram talent free people down the throats of 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 the population right. and and they'll either regurgitate it or digest it. Right. Right. So so you, you, it's a simple numbers game. You know, it's like the guy mm -hmm. it's like a guy that like, you know, he wants to get lucky. Right. Okay. So he goes into a club and he hits on 100 women. Right. As opposed to picking one, he hits on mm -hmm. 100 women because he's playing the law of averages. He's figuring he's figuring maybe I'll get lucky with two percent of what's in mm -hmm. this room. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's the same thing with an artist. Um, you know, the, the idea is to just overexpose again, money mm -hmm. overexpose and and we'll see who bites and who doesn't. It's it's almost like commercial fishing um, when mm -hmm. you get and, and the, the bigger you are as an artist the bigger your net is to be able to catch more fish. Right, right, right. Well said. I, I really like the way you explain things. You're very thorough. Your brain is clearly working. And I appreciate that because a lot of people there are asleep. Now, I did do some stalking on your ex and, and all your different pages and your Facebook. I, I, I was stalking, I was stalking, I was stalking. Now, I saw that you worked with Howard Jones. Is that correct? Well, Howard Jones, okay, so my day job. I retired. I retired from the touring game in 2015 when I became a dad for the first time at the age of 44. And, and I, my day job is I work at a theater in Clearwater uh, as the head technician here. And so the sound guy basically. Right. And, and uh, Howard Jones has come to my theater a couple of times and uh -huh. he, he's, he's a, uh, he's really fantastic. I mean, like as a, as a fan uh, of, of, of him and, and his work, He's he's his shows are really fantastic. And it's a really great trip down synthesizer 80s lane. You know, hmm. it's great. Hmm. So my question was triggered by my younger years, much younger years, almost almost maybe 20 years ago. I was in a Howard Jones, Howard Jones music video shot in Miami at the W Hotel. Okay. And uh, actually afterwards, my name's even in the music video. You can see it. They even put my name in a picture of me flashed on the screen. It was so cool in my younger years. But here's the interesting part. This is why I brought it up. Not talk about myself, even though I like to do that. He didn't want certain things in the music video. A lot of things were cut because it went against, I think, I think it was Buddhism or Buddhist religion. So I wondered with you if maybe there were certain things you're not supposed to do or say or this or that. Now, I played an alien cyborg in the video. I had this whole custom outfit. There were metal pieces made by the guy who makes the dead mouse masks. He made me arm gear. I still have it. And those dead mouse masks are amazing. Tom Bostic, we love you. Amazing. So did you have any type of like religious things that you had to follow when you were working with them? Cause we certainly did with the editing process. Yeah. No, I can tell you that, uh, uh, his visits, he's been here twice and his, his visits have been, uh, non problematic. He's very easy to deal with. And his organization is very pro and, and, uh, you know, he's one of those guys and he comes out and he delivers and he had this kind of like all star band with him, like uh, the the chat the Chapman stick. I don't know if you ever heard of this instrument called a Chapman stick, but it's basically like a giant stick. And it's got like eight, I think, eight strings on it. And it's uh -huh. like a bass guitar. And he's a primarily for bass guitar. And he was in that guy was in Kaja Goo Goo. You know, that, that kind of thing. You remember Kaja Goo Goo? You know this band? No. You're too shy, shy. Hush, hush. Oh, of course. Of course. Right. I just don't pay attention to the name. He's not the singer. The singer is Lamal of Kaja Goo Goo. And Lamal is the never ending story. You know, 
You know the song? Very Turn cool. around cool. and tell me what you see. All right. All right <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> Falsetto 80s singing. There yeah, go. uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go back. Uh, speaking of 80s, we're gonna go back to the 90s or early 2000s. Now, Napster and file sharing for you personally, how did Napster, Lime Wire, uh, file sharing change the business for you, or did it change things at all for you well, personally? It, I mean, it clearly changed the system overall for the entire industry because uh, it used to be. And this is reflected in the price of modern day tickets. Okay. So it used to be that your tour was your business card to sell this piece of plastic at a store. Wow. Right. The piece of plastic being a CD, a cassette, a vinyl, whatever. Right. Not a breast so, implant. Let's clarify. Not, no, that would be not silicon. selling. That would be silicon. Well, 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 some doctors uh, that I know that are a little cheap, they use plastic. Carry, carry on. <laughs> Wait, do they use like the do they use the foam inserts like on a my pillow, like like not, you know like, like the little not chunks that of I foam? know of. Not that I know. We didn't have the Trump campaign involved in this one, uh, Lindell. No, uh, no, no foam plastic or my pillows, but definitely plastics for sure. Microplastics, macroplastics, all the plastics. <laughs> so anyway, so uh, you know, you would go to a concert, and you'd pay like 10, 15, 20 bucks to go see a show in the 90s, early 2000s, et cetera, because they were still, the idea was it was a commercial to sell the record, right? Now it's the opposite. Since nobody buys music per se, except for the, right. the, the, the people that have Apple Music or whatever, right? right? Since nobody buys music anymore, your record is your business card to sell your show. Right. Okay? So artists don't really make much money off of streaming they don't make much money. Uh, they make zero money off of the sales of records because it's very few people are buying records. It used to be you'd sell three million records you know, on an album cycle, and 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 now it's it's you, if you sell thirty thousand, you're it's awesome. You know that kind of. I pick up what you're throwing down. So so now now what they've done is they're all these artists are out there touring to make money to pay for college for their kids and all the various things that regular things would go to pay for album sales would go to pay for and even radio for the most part has reduced uh its reach as for new artists there's mm -hmm. a lot of classic rock radio stations but they're not there isn't an awful lot of new rock radio stations mm -hmm. you know it's, mm -hmm. it's it's so and and why is that because new fans aren't listening to radio they're listening to spotify they're listening to pandora they're listening to right. whatever streaming service they have apple Right, you know? right. Well, so, luckily, that's why this interview is going to be on all of those. Thank goodness. Who listens to radio? We don't know. Yeah, I mean, it, it, I mean, even even myself, I'm kind of a like a news radio junkie. So so like when I'm in my car, like I really try not to listen to too much music because I'm I have music going on around me all the time. Right. So unless it's of course I'm listening to test mixes on something that I'm mixing or working on. Um. So I listen to talk radio. And even even myself, I'm not listening to broadcast talk radio. I'm doing it through iHeart. You know what I mean? So, right. so like I'm listening right. to my local radio station through iHeart on a 15 second delay. So. Exactly. So that leads us. We're actually at the end of the interview. We didn't even get to get into your materials because I really wanted to pick your brain. And I knew you'd have some wisdom. I didn't know you have quite this much wisdom. I was I was hoping, but you know, I. Uh, I don't really think too highly of the human population. A lot, a lot of dumb is out there. And I really wanted to know your thoughts on things. Now, please just tell us a, a little about yourself. So we didn't really get to your work and where to find your work and give us your social so that we can find you on the radio and tell us why we should listen to your content is I listened to many of your songs yesterday, but we just didn't get to talk about them. I apologize about that. So, right quick. Uh, the, the cosmic punch is the new thing that I'm pushing these days or t this, the, you know, this year, uh, it, my new record is called for all nerd kind. And it's, uh, every song on the record is about some different type of nerd fandom. Uh, uh, talking about star Trek. We're talking about Glenn Larson, the famous TV writer. I mean, who, who writes songs about TV writers? I guess I do. Uh, right. um, and, and I, I just have a new music video right now on YouTube. Uh, well on all video channels and it's, it's even on rumble, uh, uh, the, for, I love anime and I, I am a huge anime nerd from, uh, from back in the day. 
And and uh, so I, I did all of it in CGI and Cinema 4D, which is a CGI software. Hmm. And it's basically it's kind of like a cool vibe, like as if you're sitting uh, in uh, an amusement park ride and you're going through this amusement park ride of anime characters. And 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 it's it's uh, I did all of it 100 percent. It took me nearly a year to make. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, well, you know, off and on, you know, I have I'm I'm also a dad and 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 yeah. I have a job. And Back. so you have all these things that you're juggling and I have clients in the studio you know, for my studio and I'm I'm juggling all these various things at the same time. So, so, uh, but it, it's, it's a really fun piece of work. And it's also on a 3d version exists of the video for people that have uh, made a quest or, or any of the other VR headsets that are out there. Um, Could you use 3d glasses and just watch it on YouTube? If you have if you have 3D glasses that are compatible with YouTube, then it will work. If you, right. you can use you can it does project on YouTube an anaglyph, which is the red green or the red blue version. Right. Um, it it doesn't look quite as good as it does um, in a in a real 3D glasses or right. you know like the like the ones that you buy the electric ones the the active ones you know the ones that that, that they right. sell or or the MetaQuest VR helmet. Or maybe you could even have an IMAX situation where it's IMAX 3D as part of an entire show. Well, that would be fantastic if, if yeah. uh, you know, if AMC or whatever wanted to put my video on before an IMAX movie. I'd, I would. I got a movie happy. coming out. Yeah, I got a movie coming out. I want to have some acts coming out, some musical acts, maybe some stand up. Like you a have whole... a movie coming out? I got a bunch of movies coming out, but I know one for a fact is going to be a movie theater. So... Why can't they have some hot jinks? Why can't they have some music videos before? I don't know. You know, the best ideas come as jokes. You got to make your thinking as funny as possible. And on that note, folks, we are over time by four minutes. But I really wanted to hear from this man. I'm going to hear it from my producer, Mark Torres. I'm sorry. You know, I always go over time, but I tried my best. I tried my best. All right. Well, thank you so much. We listed your socials. We got through everything. I would love to hire this man to produce some of my music as I have templates for at least 20 songs and there will be music coming out respect for all the hard work and uh yeah check this man out he's definitely a creator and an innovator and i'll definitely be looking forward to hearing more from juan punchy gonzalez and now for more it came from the radio back to you mark 